Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Friday, February 4th, 2011. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S., 4.30 p.m. in London, 6.30 p.m. in Cairo. In Mexico City, it's 10.30 a.m. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. On this day in history, in 2004, seven short years ago, um, Mark Zuckerberg launched Facebook. Well, it's come a long way fast. And Alice Cooper, school's out for summer, is 63 years old today. Well, we'll go from the uh, ridiculous to the sublime, or actually the possibly tragic. Uh, Al Jazeera is reporting that there are now two million Egyptians in Tahir Square uh, chanting uh, that uh, President Mubarak must leave. Hundreds of thousands of people have been gathering throughout the day and the uh, total is now up to two million. This is the so-called day of departure. They're hoping to uh, drive Mubarak out of the country today. This is the 11th day of unrest. The demonstrations were scheduled to begin after uh, the Friday prayers at the mosques. Thousands of people are also protesting in the second largest city in Egypt, in Alexandria. Uh, people are also uh, protesting in Giza and in Luxor. Uh, there are very little signs of Mubarak loyalists today in Tahir Square, but there are some. Uh, the military apparently is uh, continuing to play a role in making sure that the pro-democracy protesters are well separated from the pro-Mubarak protesters. Really, uh, I don't know quite how it's going to play out. I don't think anybody does, but it definitely uh, is interesting. They've also let the uh, uh, journalists back into Tahir Square. Uh, so there is live TV footage coming from there. All you have to do is turn on a cable TV and you'll see it. Well, uh, yesterday we noted that QBE was on the verge of some announcements. Um, well, here we go. There's a few of them here. They put their net cost burden from the recent flooding and typhoon activity that hit Australia at 245 million Australian dollars. Uh, they have decided then now to implement a worldwide reinsurance program that they say would save the company some 300 million a year. Now, whatever broker got this uh, was well worth his uh, weight in gold. Uh, for worldwide cats, the company has purchased a single layer of 1.3 billion in excess of 200 million with total prepaid cover purchased of $2.6 billion. That cover's been placed 100% for this year. For worldwide per risk, the company has a single layer of $200 million in excess of $50 million with a $1 billion aggregate cover. That's been 100% placed. A worldwide cat and risk aggregate cover layer offers $170 million of protection with an excess of $800 million for an accumulation of cat and individual risk claims above $5 million. Uh, finally, a worldwide risk aggregate cover of $200 million, with an excess of $400 million, covers an accumulation of indi individual risk claims above $5 million from the ground up. This has been about 88% placed for this year. And then in addition to that, QBE bought high-level cat covers for Australia and New Zealand and renewed protections for businesses not included in the worldwide covers. Frank O'Halloran has been very busy. The uh, CEO and chairman of QBE, he now announced that uh, the deal with Bank of America to see it purchase Balboa Insurance has in fact gone off. It's occurred. QBE is going to pay $700 million up front for the distribution rights and portfolio of Bank of America's Balboa Insurance. The portfolio transfer also sees QBE assuming about $1.2 billion in outstanding claims and unearned premium liabilities from Balboa. QBE also came into a decade-long distribution agreement with BOA for lender-placed and voluntary homeowners, contents, motor, and other related consumer lines. Uh, Ohio says that the uh, deal, the $700 million, will be substantially amortized in the first three years. QBE anticipates gross earned premium and net earned premium from the distribution agreement will be around $1.5 billion and $1.3 billion, respectively. O'Halloran said the distribution agreement with Bank of America in the United States and the portfolio transfer provide QBE with a specialist personal lines portfolio 
which is complementary to the Sterling National business we acquired in 2008. Boy, he has created an empire. Good for him. Well, Bloomberg, it always is interesting when the mainstream business news media uh, begins to understand reinsurance. Uh, this is a pretty accurate story, actually. Bloomberg is reporting that the Lloyds of London, three biggest insurers, Amlin, Hiscox, and Catlin, may post declines in annual pre-tax profit of at least 37 percent. This is after the quake in Chile, the New Zealand earthquakes, have eroded profits from a year without losses from any major American hurricane. Thomas Dorner, an analyst at Oriel Securities in London, says it's unusual in that it was quite a bad year for insured losses, even though the U.S. hurricane season was benign. Lloyd's insurers have sought to write more policies outside the U.S. to cut possible losses from hurricanes. This is after Katrina and Ike. February's earthquake in Chile and September's quake in New Zealand cost insurers worldwide a combined $14 billion. Amlin, Hiscox, and Catlin's losses were about $700 million. Chile's 8.8 uh, .8 quake cost insurers about $8 billion. Uh, meanwhile, the Deepwater Horizon spill in the Gulf of Mexico in April cost the three insurers a further $70 million, according to company estimates, and could cost the uh, Lloyd's syndicate $600 million total. Losses, though, haven't been enough, though, to prompt insurers to boost their premium prices. Uh, Carpenter, of course, said earlier this year that rates last year fell 7.5%. So after paying out $62 billion in claims after Hurricane Katrina, insurers raised capital to take advantage of an increase uh, in prices. Since then, 27 consecutive quarters have occurred in which U.S. P&C and reinsurance rates have dropped. Um, there's no, that's not news to anybody who watches this broadcast, as we know. Um, there's an interesting article from the uh, Royal Gazette in Bermuda today. It reveals uh, an interesting sign of Evan Greenberg that we didn't know he had. Um, ACE estimated that the Australian floods will cost it between $75 million and $90 million. That number was revealed by uh, Evan Greenberg, the chairman and CEO of ACE, in a conference call yesterday following the uh, ACE announcement of a $1 billion fourth quarter profit. Uh, asked about the magnitude of likely losses from Cyclone Yasi, which hit Queensland this week, Mr. Greenberg answered, I have no bloody idea. The thing just hit. I got a note this morning that said, oh my God, it's like it went through the uprights between two cities and looks like it didn't hit them, that it was in some area that was far less populated. He's exactly right. Yasi came ashore yesterday between the city of Cairns and Townsville caused a lot less damage than it might have. Speaking of damage, applied insurance research is saying that insured losses from Yazi could be between 350 million U.S. and 1.5 billion U.S. According to AIR, newer commercial buildings had only minor damage, indicating the effectiveness of Australia's building code. Um, Non-engineered residential structures performed less well that's to be expected, with major structural damage mainly to roofs. The towns of Tully and Cardwell were particularly hard hit, with many buildings sustaining significant damage. Flooding, of course, is still a problem. 65% uh, of the homes in Cairns, a city of over 160,000 people, are still without electricity. AIR said that losses from Yazi may well exceed those of Cyclone Larry in 2006 which cost about $540 million, 2006 Australian dollars. And back to ACE, news from ACE-owned combined insurance in the UK. The entire staff of 325 people at the UK offices uh, is being faced with redundancy. This is being reported by Insurance Times. Another 400 independent sales agents will be affected by the restructuring of combined insurance, which sells accident and health insurance cover. Spokesman for Combined said it was no longer open to new business, but is continuing to serve existing policyholders. The stock market in New York uh, is down about 12 points right now. I'll go to a word from our sponsors.
Well, good news, bad news on the American uh, job front. Uh, the bad news is that only 38,000 new jobs were created in the month of January. The good news is that the unemployment rate dropped sharply down to 9%, the lowest level in two years. Uh, the January report shows how job growth remains the American economy's weakest spot, even though other indicators are showing a recovering economy. Severe winter weather probably reduced the number of jobs created. Construction fell by 32,000. Transportation and warehousing also fell by 38,000. Manufacturing, which is generally conducted indoors, away from the weather, increased by 49,000 jobs, the most uh, since 1998. So the unemployment rate has fallen by eight-tenths of a percentage point in the past two months. That's the steepest two-month drop in nearly 53 years. That's good news. Well, check this map out. This is the uh, seismic activity map for the last uh, 24 hours or so in Australia, Asia. Uh, notice that big red square over on the right. Uh, it's a little bit uh, dead on in the Marshall Islands, a little bit uh, south of the New Guinea chain. That's a 5.6 earthquake. That's relatively unpopulated. It hasn't prompted any uh, tsunami warnings. Over on the right, though, the lower right, you can see a blue box. That's what we're talking about now. That, of course, is New Zealand. Uh, there were two pretty sharp aftershocks there from the, uh, the big uh, New Zealand quake in the fall. Uh, the first was a magnitude 4.6 quake. That hit the town of Canterbury. Um, that's about 20 kilometers southwest of Christchurch. That's about 12 miles. Christchurch, of course, is where the big earthquake hit. Uh, the other earthquake uh, was a 3.7, and that struck uh, about... 12 miles in a little bit of another direction from Christchurch. Uh, so there was, uh, there was some rocking there. Uh, no damage or injuries were reported. However, it uh, definitely attracted people's attention. It occurred at uh, just about dinner time. So, well, for our final story, we noticed this one earlier in the week. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the destruction of the, the Moscow uh, Damodedovo Airport. Uh, 35 people were killed here, one a suicide bomber, uh, who they have not been able to identify yet, even though they have uh, his severed head uh, in the Russian mortuary. It was a man. Um, they don't know exactly who was involved and who did it. Um, this is a, uh, a black widow uh, suicide bomber. Um, we can bring her up. This is with her husband. Uh, she's a Chechen. This particular woman actually was killed in a mission earlier this year. Um, the Russian police are saying that a, a Black Widow suicide bomber on New Year's Eve, uh, who was apparently part of the plot to blow up the uh, Russian airport, um, was uh, foiled in an attempt to detonate a suicide belt in Red Square on New Year's Eve. Had she been successful, she would have ended up possibly killing hundreds of people. The Russian security sources believe that a message from her mobile phone operator wishing her a happy new year, which she received just hours before the attack, triggered her suicide belt, blowing her up at her safe house. Islamic terrorists in Russia often use mobile phones as detonators. The bomber's handler, who is usually watching their uh, charge, sends the bomber a text message in order to set off her explosive belt at the moment when he thinks they're going to be able to inflict the maximum casualties. The dead woman has not been identified, but her husband is thought to be serving time in jail for being a member of a radical Islamist terrorist group. Security sources believe that the New Year's Eve attacks were uh, perpetrated by a suicide squad trained in Pakistan in an Al-Qaeda stronghold. Amazing. Well, it's one of those... Uh, cases. I, I don't know. I guess you would, I don't know how you would do that. You certainly don't want to turn your cell phone off before you go on your suicide attack. But at the same token, I certainly wouldn't be walking around with my armed belt on and risk some person, inadvertent or intentional, sending me a text message blowing me up at the wrong time. Ah, what can you do? Well, the Super Bowl is Sunday, 6.25 p.m. The Green Bay Packers will play the Pittsburgh Steelers. Billions and billions and billions of dollars are being spent in connection with the event. Super Bowl is traditionally held in nice warm weather places such as New Orleans, Miami, or Southern California. There were five inches of snow in Dallas.
today, which is where the game is being played. Next year, though, the game will be being played in New York, actually in northern New Jersey, where on Sunday it'll be 12 degrees with snow. So, brilliant idea for the NFL. That's all the news we have for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll get back and tell you. In the meantime, have a good weekend, and we'll see you Monday.